Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. This is going to be a fun one, a wacky one, a crazy one, a cookie one. How you doing, Marcus? Hey, hey, I'm good. We just had Chipotle. I got that full gut of pico de gallo. That's it. Oh, okay. It sounded yeah. like there was more coming. Well, um, there's a shit coming, I'll tell you that. There's a storm of brewing in the old uh, belly. It's a hard poop's going to fall. <laughs> Remember when we used to, the old, old days, Upper West Side. By the way, you know who I saw? Schumer? I saw Schumer a second uh, ago with okay. you, so you know that for yep, sure. Got that one. Just saw her. Looking good, by the way. Yeah. She's nice, a mom. Nice to see her. Uh, no. What was I saying? Oh, who did I see? I did my hour. At, uh, people say my hour. I, I just headlined the Fat Black. It's a little pretentious, this my hour <laughs> bullshit. It's like a, a one-man show or a, a special event. I know, and it, it caught on. It seeps into the thing, and now I'm saying it. It seeps, and, and then uh, they say, an evening with Joe List. Oh, <laughs> an evening. What, are we going on a date? Am I, I blowing you? Am I... candles and a, and a horse-drawn buggy with a hand job. But ages, so yeah. we go. I go and do the fat black pussycat. Great time, mm. Steve, Big Dick Rogers, mm. Matt Wayne, who's I think the funniest person on the fucking planet. Nobody funnier than old M.W. I mean, I, I wish I could be one of these guys that could produce your album. Yes, I'm like, how, how do I get to be that guy? Can I, would I start love a label. That. Would you love? I, this is my dream: a show called Underrated, mm. and then in each episode, it's a thirty-minute. You, you go, "Hey, Chad Daniels, come to Underrated." He's like, "Great!" And then you get to. It's like Rodney with the young comedians. Yeah, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Because Matt Wayne is the funniest person I've ever met in my life. Killer jokes, hilarious. Yeah, he's got no album, no special, no YouTube, no Instagram, no money. Uh, never said ha. I mean, <laughs> it's. Uh, I want to just take it all and just shove it up everyone's ass until yeah. they come. But that's nice. Uh, a lot of comics go, hey, this guy's really funny. How can I ruin his life? How can I kill him? How can I fuck his wife? And you're like, I want to help him. Right. So, oh, good guy here. But uh, anyways, he's hilarious. It was a great time. But back to the original point. Ah, uh, the point. Think Upper West Side, old school. You know who I bumped into? Uh, Came to the show. Oh, wow. Hold on. Hold you're on. never going to get Twi- it. D. Snyder. No, uh, Up West Side, the old days of the podcast. Fatigate? No, you're never going to guess. I'm uh, giving you bad clues. Benji? Shelby? No, no. Uh, Shelby buying a ticket to see me? I don't think so. Good point, good point. Oh, right, they came and saw you. Yeah. All right, hit me. Mick? DeFlo? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that DeFloed. <laughs> no, flow. Mick from Starbucks. Remember Mick? Mick? Nick? I think it's Mick. Rick? I think it's Mick. Remember the, Mick wait. from Starbucks? Oh, I would have never gotten that. The, I the, know. The black guy? The black guy. Yes. You remember. Yeah, he took wow. me up. We'd go there before and after every podcast. He was Mick. He was a Tuesday. Uh-huh. And he'd give me a nice free tea. Which I, I remember. And you got the chocolate chip cook. The cookie. And he'd give me a cookie and a whole thing. I think he got fired. I think he's out in the streets. Well, he was giving out cookies <laughs> like it was a uh, riot act. Cookie what day. is a riot act? The Riot Act. <laughs> Read me the Riot that. Act. Read you the Riot Act. It's got to be a law, right? The Act. Yeah, I guess. Like Brown v. Wade that, Act. Is that an act? That's a miscarriage, I think. No, it's uh, it's abortion. Ah, oh, that's right. Then there's uh, Brown, ver- Brown versus the Board of... Vic- was everything Brown back then? Well, a lot then? of Browns back then. Not in, not in the restaurants. Yeah, those are both Brown, isn't it? Ah, Brown they- versus the Board of Education is... Oh, Br- Roe v. Oh, it's Roe v. Wade. Roe v. I'm, Wade. I'm conflating. Yes, you're thinking of Brown University, or um. No, I think that's the na- woman's name. Brown versus the Board of Education. Yes. I think that's a lady that wanted to go to school. Then there was Murphy Brown. That was a show. And the Cleveland Browns. Yes, yes, and my underwear Brown. It's but- bad Leroy Brown. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's Brown Eyed Girl. Oh yeah, she's good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, where do we go? Encyclopedia Brown. Remember that? That's Britannica, isn't it? (laughs) Encyclopedia Britannica? Well, Encyclopedia Brown was a detective show. Oh, I don't know that show. That was his name. 
It was like an Indiana Jones. He had a kooky name. Then there's Emmett L. Brown, Back to the Future. Ah, that's Dr. Right. Brown. And then there's James Brown. From the waist Hi. down. Hi. Living in America. That's a James Brown lyric. He wrote that shit. Yeah. He said, I need a word here. Hi. That's good. Wait, you were saying something and it, it Mick. gurgled something. Mick. Oh, I got it back. All so right. we were talking about Mick. On our way up the stairs in my apartment, we were talking about some old guy we used to know back in the 40s who quit comedy, yada, yada. We were? Just now? Yeah, just now. Remember? The guy no. did comedy. He said he's a Tuesday. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I go, wow, I haven't thought about that guy in like 20 years or 10 years or whatever. And it all comes rushing back. And I think the brain really has an, a, a finite amount of people that it can let you hang with. Well, I believe, I don't believe, but <laughs> I'm an atheist I, I, too. I, as I was saying that, but I think you can recall most things that happened in your life. You just need to be have a finger in your ass. Right. You need a little boost. You need a boost. It's, but, it's like trying to get hard. Uh, Tony V has that great joke where he says people tell him uh, stories or information. And he's like, ah, I'm sorry. I got Bon Jovi lyrics up here. They're just not going anywhere. Oh, that's so fun. you can say whatever you want, but it's not going to be stored up there. Right, right. Because you have, Finite. I got every line of Goodfellas jammed up there. I can't, I, I can't take in new information. Yeah, but you ever see something like, uh, and say something, you know, you go back to your parents' house, you pop a VHS in, you're like, oh, my God, I haven't seen this in years. And this was my whole world. It's like a home video you made. And you're like, what the hell is this? Who is that friend? I forgot about that guy. Remember his mom was hot? Oh, man, we d- drove his dad's car. It all comes whooshing back. And it's another world. And now you're in this world. That's why it's important to remember this. When you're going through shit, uh-huh. none of this will matter. It's I mean, a blip. think about it. There's an old adage. I tried to do this bit. It never works ever. Mm. But people say, try to remember what you were worried about a year ago today. Ooh. Which is it's helpful. My bit is always, I remember, it was death. Yeah. I was worried about death. <laughs> oh, that's that's what I'm worried about is death. And But I think people it depresses people. It's a They're bummer. Like, Jesus. I feel like if you change it to can't get it up or something, it might soften it. You can't. Hey, that's a fun pun. Ah. Uh, I think classic. you can't joke about death. They don't you like it. Talk about death. They're like, f- there's people, it's the same people that are like, don't say plane crash when we're on the plane. Yeah, yeah. There's people yeah. that think if you say death, Someone's going to die. Yeah, it's human nature. Well, they, you know, we were scared. We had to invent heaven just to avoid this feeling of, uh, oh, we're never going to be around, which to me I find kind of comforting. Like, sure. Yeah, you're dead. You're in the dirt. A worm is going up your ass, and you don't feel it. You don't know it. It's kind of nice. Yeah, I need something big up my ass to feel it these days. But Earthworm. It all passes, and that's the thing with school, and that's the thing that's so frustrating. You can't. Put that on a kid. They're like, oh, I my know. God, I got a zit on my asshole. And my, my, the my father hit me. And my mother is getting divorced. And my grandma's got great tits. Sure. And you go, none of this is going to matter. Not a thing. In like six weeks, six years, ten years. I know, but it's hard. When you're in the eye of the storm, you can't see the outside of that wind. You got the cow going by and the barn going by. You're like, this is it. I know. It's all over. You can't see the forest from the queefs, but it's going to be... It's all cheese. It's all going to be great. It's all yeah. fine. Yeah. But anyways, Mick came to the show. Oh, it was good nice Mick. to see Mick. Good and, old uh, Mickey. And his buddy was like his uh, hype man. He's like, you remember Mick? And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Mick. He's like, he used to be at Starbucks. And then Mick was just sitting there kind of embarrassed. But uh, it was great to see Mick. And Fat Black is nice because I can, I can pack it. Yes. It was like sold out. You're like, it feels good. It seats 28 people. That's the best. But uh, and it, it felt feels, good. It feels loungy in there. I don't know if you folks have ever been to the Fat Black Pussy Cab, but it, it feels very 60s, uh, vibey, jazzy, velvety, fun. Like that Playboy After Dark kind of vibe. Well, that's what we tried to do that show, remember? It oh, was a big failure. Big flop. Ooh, that was ugly. That was so bad. It was like the worst night of our lives. Yeah, yeah. I've had a few of oh, those. We had industry there. Oh! When I think about that, it just sends a shiver oh, up my pee hole. God, I hate industry. They, they don't get it. We had people come, and we got the... the, the, the we had a, a naked beefy, guy. We had a beefy shirtless guy, and then with a bow tie, we were trying to be sexual. Yeah, we ate it. It's still a good show idea. It's not bad. Tell the folks at home if if you want to. It read. was basically like the Playboy show. Yep, but with us hosting, and instead of like hot women, would have beefy guys, right? To be uh, inclusive, would have like sexy beef cakes, walking around with bow ties and no shirt, handing out drinks, and you can smoke and everything. 
And then you have comics. We basically do the podcast but with podcast with uh, guests. Yeah, I guess I don't know what the hook is, but then I realize that show didn't have a hook either. The Playboy show. The hook is it's fun. Well, yeah, they don't like that shit because it's on TV. Speaking of fun, here comes old Dick Dick Cheese coming in. Big long cat. I don't know if he makes it in the frame there. That's all right. All right, all right. He's up and at him. I mean, how do you not? Uh, you gonna go marble table or squishy fur chair? You gotta go fur chair. Yeah, the fur chair. But I think this table is cool, and he's got some fuzz. So he's wrapped in a blanket. Remember. That's true. So if I had my own blanket, I'd still go with the chair. And he is a Maine coon. All right, from easy, Maine. Easy. Sorry, he's a Maine Afro American, but from Maine. It's a chilly climate up there, so I think they're yes. they're bred to uh, to be warm. So in the in the summer, he was in hell. Is it actually Maine, the state of Maine? Yeah, that's where they started. No kidding. I, I got to we, we should bond over this. You ever go to yes. Booth Bay Harbor? There you go. I saw a whisker move. What about Bangor? Bangor and uh, you like Stephen uh, King? Lewiston, Maine. Aha. Uh-huh. And there's Portland. Also, most um, matchsticks come from Maine. That's a fun fact. No kidding. Yeah, that's their big uh, out- export. Most coastline. Uh, one syllable state. Yeah. You know what they say? This this one hit me hard the other day. England is smaller than Texas. Yeah, by a lot. Isn't that crazy, though? I think of England. I think, oh, this empire. They conquered everybody. They got bad teeth and horrible food and worse weather. Smaller than Texas. No wonder we can't get along. We're all we're too big. England's small. I mean, I think it's England's country, smaller though. than New England. I mean, it's tiny. Is it? It's a little England? blip. Oh, yeah. I'd have to look at the square mileage, but I mean, I think it's a lot smaller than New England. I, I mean, are we talking? Are we talking the United Kingdom, the whole UK? I mean, Texas is enormous. Maybe Texas uh, is bigger than my dick. Well, maybe UK is a is, uh, is a little more. Maybe they throw Florida in. We get the UK, but uh, yeah, pull pull the map up there, Fanny. I mean, look at it. There's the whole UK, but you got to really zoom in. To yeah, get you got to zoom. Mean, England it's is like my dick. Uh, you know, you got Scotland on top there, but England is, is, ain't so big. Ain't so big, but you just think of it as a superpower, a Big Ben, uh, the Beatles. Well, that's what the thing is. They they've owned everything they've i think yes. they've occupied like 87 percent of the planet at some point or another they got rugby in india for christ's sake i mean they've been everywhere i'm getting the square mileage of england Ooh-wee. it's not much i'm shocked i mean it just shows size doesn't matter because they came in and really jizzed on a lot of places well i think if you just go in and start shooting people and killing them or whatever well, i think they had the, the big technology back in the day they uh, what do they colonize that's what they do huh? yeah colonialist imperialists yeah yeah uh, yeah gerbilists I, I don't know there's all kinds of ists i don't wear cologne but toponymy history Where oh the there you is, go uh... it's gonna be tough to get the square mile i don't know you might have to put that in the siri i'll put it right in don't worry yeah. well, this is where we need a producer put it in my ass yeah england all right here we go square miles okay here it comes. very exciting Fifty thousand square miles mm, that sounds like a lot when you put it like that it does because when you fly to california it's about five thou well, I know... I don't know if that's a square mile. No, that's not a square mile. I think miles. it's like 3,000 miles across the country. Oh, I thought it was five. I think it's five to England, three ah, to California. How do you like that? All right, states by oh, square miles. It comes right up. I know Maine is about 14,000 square miles. Alaska, 570,000 wow, square miles. Wow, that's huge. That's like a continent. So let's go through all the states that oh, are bigger than England. Oh, jeez, we don't have that kind of time. Sure we do. Good All Lord. right, I'm going to start with, I mean, most of the states are bigger than England. Wow. Just England. That's England. That's not the UK. Okay. That's just England. But I'd like to know what the UK is. We're getting real square. All right, I'm just going to say this. There's 27, 28 states bigger than England. All right, well. Georgia, Michigan, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Florida, Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, Utah, Jesus. Oregon. Jesus. England's no, tiny. No, but I'm saying no wonder we're so divided and fucked up and, and queefy because, uh. Uh, there's a lot of space, so there's a lot of different thoughts, a lot of different ideas. I mean, you go to Nashville, you're in honky tonk, straw hat, cowboy boot wearing uh, country town. You go to Florida, you're ay 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 Cuba, do a line and have a plantain. Then you go to Phoenix, and it's like blonde women with fake tits and dentists and golf carts. Then you go to San Francisco, and it's a bunch of hippie dippies and hobos. We're not united. It's all. No. 
kooky and quacky. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. No, but we're not united, but we are united. That's the thing. We're united, I guess. I mean, that's the name of the states is united. Yeah, they're united. It's one country. You got one president and all that shit. Sure. It's all very, it's diverse. Oh, yeah. Mentally and uh, racially. But yeah, yeah, I guess it's a good thing. Because it's kind of fun going to Denver and be like, ooh, it's, it's a little rocky over here. These guys are fun and different. And then you go to Philly, and it's a bunch of meatheads and, and hairy-armed uh, mooks. Yes. So, well, I think it's fun. It's like Europe. I mean, it's kind of like Europe where you travel sure. from country to country, but that's even more diverse. Because Switzerland oh, yeah. and then Italy, you got different oh, languages yeah. and whatnot. You got sheep, and then you got a swarthy, hairy greaseball. Yeah. So, and we got both those here, I think, yeah, to some I think degree. Yeah, yeah, everybody's a sheep. It's all a lot of fun. The, the world is a great big oyster. Yes. And we're pearls or whatever. Mm, pearl jam. Well, I don't know, I like, I don't know I where I, I am anymore in this. I don't either. I had oysters two days ago. I love a good oyster. I don't hate an oyster. It's like eating cum. That's what I like. <laughs> it's like they put cum on a shell and then you, you suck it down. It's disgusting. It's like uh-huh. a jello shot to me. Well, who's the first guy to eat one? That guy was hungry. Wow, that's a that's a road you can go down with everything. True. First guy to wipe his ass, first guy to well. swallow cum, first guy to, you know, watch a movie. There's a lot of firsts. I guess, but a movie was made to be watched. I feel like an oyster, some guy had to crack it open and go, oh, there's jizz in here. This is not what I hoped. I thought it would be a berry or a nut. I guess it is a nut. <laughs> But uh, it's jizz, and he had to slurp it down. That's how starving he was. Well, think about about everything. I mean, someone tried a pig foot. Someone tried to cook a cow. They they ate it raw. They got sick and died. The whole family died. I mean, think about how much has happened from here to us. We're living in a great time, minus the social media and division (laughs) and all that stuff. Of course, society's crumbling around us, and I want to kill myself every day. Here, here. But... We know what well, we can eat and not eat. You got you know that I mean? right. Like romaine lettuce. Uh, people didn't think to eat that. They ate poison ivy. They ate, you know, their sister's assholes <laughs> on a Wednesday for fun. Also spicy. So it's good. Like we, I always think it's weird. I think we've talked about this before, maybe. How do animals know what's food and what's not food? Like, I, how do we know? You I look around the house. I know what to eat and what not to eat. That's a box. That's a fucking cat toy. Well, you got to think food. We're all animals, too. And food is number uno. Food is number one. It's a, how do I get food? How do I get it? Then it's like shelter, fucking, maybe water, you know, anal. So food is uno. So, you know, these animals in the woods, they wake up and just go, food, got to get food, got to get food. Right. And so we're going to, that's our first job, and we've got evolution. So you smell the you smell the glass, and you go, well, that ain't food. But then you smell a, a raspberry, and you go, that is. But it's hard to know. Like, But that's the thing with a cat or a dog. They know. You throw a dog uh, a shoe, he's like, nah, it's not food. How does he know? How does he know not to swallow a shoe? I think he might swallow a shoe. It is leather. It's an animal. I don't know any dogs swallowing shoes. Uh, dogs will eat anything. I don't know. Eat some peanut butter right now and prove it to you. But well, peanut butter's food. <laughs> well, that's true. But one time I was uh, put a shoe on your dick. You're not getting a blowjob. But like, if I drop a, a piece of turkey, he'll eat it. The fat sure. cat. But if I food? drop a Tylenol PM, he'll go. And he won't eat it. That's what I'm saying. I know, How does he I know. know about the PM and the turkey? Well, one's a chemical and one's a meat. <laughs> Huh. So the old factory in the in the honker there in the schnoz is going no good, good. But that's what's so crazy because then you get in this weird, twisty, turny world of like, but how does it? How does his nose work? How does wow. his nose go into his brain and then his brain works? Well, you're also talking about thousands of years of evolu. I know. That's what I mean. That's yeah. so exciting. It's very exciting. That's how it had to have happened. It got passed down, I guess, through one cat to a dog. Right. You ever go to a small town, and you're like, man, it's like a 1987 museum here. You know, everything is a little older. The, they're still wearing no fear shirts and uh, <laughs> baggy jeans with a hammer loop. And you're like, oh, man, you guys are way behind. Yeah. But I guess the Internet changed that a little. Yeah, the Internet's some, big. Sometimes you'd go to a town in the 90s, and you're like, woof, you guys are way out. <laughs> you, know, you guys are saying crazy shit that no one says anymore, like radical or groovy. Right. And then you bring those things back. I'll hear people say yeah. rad now. You talk to Dean Del Rey. Oh, man. Everything's groovy, rad, fire. <laughs> it's all. It's, it's, He's doing all the decades, that guy. <laughs> He's got a range of stuff. 
But uh, it is weird when you hear new words, and then all of a sudden they seep in. You start saying them. That's true. I, I think we talked about this. I'm like, I haven't seen you in a minute, and I'm like, what the hell just happened to me? People would say that, and I'm like, what are you talking oh, about yeah. a minute? What is this horse shit? I'd say, I said dope the other day. I almost oh, jumped off the roof. I'm like, eating over I? here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I, I caught myself. You're a dope. Exactly. So it, it happens. It seeps, Jerry. The cat's eating its paw right now. Yeah, it's, that, that's where they call that giving a bath. He's giving himself a bath. I, that's really crazy. I mean, I'm sure this bit has been done, but imagine, you know, you're Look at Get your own something sack. on your thing, you just lick it off. I know. These cats are idiots. You really got to care about yourself to lick shit off your arm. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Native Deodorant. Look, I smell horrible. We all smell terrible. I've been trying to shower less, so uh, the fumes are cooking. We go to the gym, we run, we work out, and we just live and breathe. We smell weird. The body has an odor, let's be honest. Native cares about what you put into your body and put on your body. They want to stop you from stinking, and they want to stop you the right way. You know Native for their legendary aluminum-free deodorant, but they take the same philosophy and made body wash, toothpaste, and mineral-based sunscreen. Hello, broad-spectrum SPF 30 for your face and body. It's lightweight. Absorbs quickly, and you can choose between unscented or coconut and pineapple. <whistles> Get deodorant and body wash and amazing scents like coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose, and more. You can even build your own personalized product bundles. That's not bad. Mix and match three of your favorite scents and keep them on rotation so you have something for every occasion. Stay fresh, clean, with native by going to nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories, one word. Or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories. Or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout for 20% off your first order. Get on it! Hey, hey, Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. You can't control the vibes in the outside world. Sometimes they're groovy and sometimes they stink. But you can control the vibes that go into your noggin. How? With Raycon earbuds. I love Raycon. I got a pair at the house. I keep them by the bed. I throw them in my ear balls when I, when I lay down, when I watch TV. Sometimes I'll clean and i'll throw these puppies in the sound is great they snug fit right in that ear and they're just the crispest best pipes coming at you i mean i I put these on at the gym i I walk around the town i love walking christopher and uh it's just a good time you gotta get them they got the new everyday earbuds they look and feel and sound better than ever they've got a shiny new look optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit you get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds great and just the right amount of bass. You got pure mode for podcasts. You got balance mode for heavy metal and rock. And you got bass mode for hip hop, EDM, and reggae. That's my uh, gay porn name, reggae. There's also a new, all new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings a uh, car honk or a lady yelling at you, maybe a cat call from a construction site. Who knows? So get on it. They offer eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life. Damn. They also have a built-in mic so you can take calls at the press of a button. Raycon started half the price at premium auto brands, but they sound just as good, if not better. And with a 40-day happiness guarantee, you have no reason not to try. Right now, you Tuesdays can get 15% off all their products just for being our listeners. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-U-Y, not buy like me. That's it. You'll get 15% off your order. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. One more time. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Well, I think it's obvious to the folks at home we're recording two episodes in one week. No, <laughs> you gave away the magic. Well, they're going to be saying, what's going on here? This is kooky. I'd rather just give it to them. Give it to them straight. Yeah, you're a straight shooter. I'd like to shoot straight. I mean, they're going to say, shooter. how come this is so wacky? This is kooky. Well, let me, let me run this by you. Uh, please. Norway 
You been there? Yep. Oh yeah, you had the reindeer. Many times I've been there. I had whale, what? reindeer. I've been to Norway four times in my Jesus, life. Jesus, who are you, Daniel Simonson? I'm a real Norwegian. I guess so. You're a Scandinavian. There's a bunch of gays up there. I'll tell you that. Scandinavian. So I go to Norway. No, I'm reading the Norway news. Coronavirus. Was... Norway news. Oh yeah, I get the news from all over. <laughs> That's where I learned that Texas is bigger than England. But that's the news. <laughs> well, they're a little behind there. It was a slow day. But my point is coronavirus is declared a flu. Huh. There today. What's that mean? That means they're like, "Ah, it's a flu. We're we're calling it a flu. We're moving on." Interesting. I think that's a good sign. I think we're maybe Pulling out a little bit. I feel like you go around New York, even the masks are lower. The uh, the the amount of people giving a shit is lower. People are sitting next to each other. Here's what I don't understand, though. Isn't it not a flu? I thought it was a coronavirus, and the flu is an influenza virus. I yeah. I, I can't keep track of what's what because I heard the flu now is just a version of the Spanish flu. Like eventually, mm. a cold will just be the coronavirus. Will be a cold, but I thought a cold was a cold. I, I can't keep track of this shit. The common cold. I know we can't get rid of the cold. They say it's incurable. Like right, herpes. no cure uh, for cancer. <laughs> well, I was talking to Colin Quinn, who just got COVID again, and he said his doctor was, it was like nothing. It was like a blip. Right. He felt like he had a headache for 10 minutes. And the doctor said this will just be a calm, this will be like the new cold in a couple of years. Oh, that's, I can live with that. Yeah, me too. Let's do it. As, if you're vaccinated. I think if you're unvaccinated, it, it fucking rapes your mother or something. But then they say the vaccine wears off in eight minutes and you got to redo it. It's It sucks. But I'm happy to get a booster. It seems like fun to me. Well, I'll give, go get a boost. Give me the booster at a, at a Jamba Juice. You know, I don't want to go into the government building, wait in line with the fat Asian lady who doesn't speak English, and then, uh, you, you know, it takes an hour and a half. Jamba Boost. Yes. That's pretty good. But I think I was talking to somebody last night. They said they just went, no identification, no nothing. They said, hey, I'll take that Pfizer uh, boost, and they mm. shoved it right up their ass. So, oh, all right. So I, I don't know what's what, but I think we're fine. I mean, I think we're fine. I went to Philly, did meet and greets, did every show, whatever, no masks, uh, shook hands, kissed yep. everyone on the lips. Same. Tested negative, uh, sellers packed every night. Every night. You just got to show that card. That's how they get you. Yeah. I don't mind showing a card. I got a card. I don't mind any of it. Yeah. All right. All right. It'll be nice if they could do other things with a boost. You can get the booster vaccine. Give me a boost of uh, vitamin C, penicillin, and Portuguese speaking. You know, put it all in a boost. I want a whole boost. I, you can get a D boost for sure. Oh, you it's get a D vitamin. boost. Yeah, you get a D boost. Oh, I had one of those last night. Great, great German film. D boost. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you take a multivitamin. The Spanish is going to be tricky. Yeah, that'll be, t- that'll be tough. Well, it's Portuguese, but uh, still, eventually, it's a chip. I chip. think you get a chip. You get the Portuguese chip. You shove it in your brain or whatever. That's what they're talking about. In the future, you can scan your eyeballs. You can you can fuck your dad if you want. Right. It'll, it'll all be chips. You can get an incest chip, a gay chip, Ooh. Uh, a chocolate chip, whatever sure. you Sure. Pringles, whatever. You can't have just one chip. But I, uh, it's weird that everybody's like, I don't want them tracking me You know, with the vaccine. But then you're like, you got a phone in your asshole every, every 10 seconds. Everywhere you're walking, you got your steps marked. You got a satellite connection. Don't get me You're on the started Wi-Fi. on these people with the things. It's just goofballs. But and everyone's going to hate me for sure. But it is, it's, it's crazy. I'm like, if you're upset about the tracking, I hope you don't fly anywhere, have a phone, or do anything. I hope yeah. you're in the woods because <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what's going on here. And uh, I don't know. There's a, there's a camera on every single street corner, everything. I, I've just given up. I'm like, all right, we're tracked. What are you yeah, going to do? Tracked. It's uh, like when they, in the 90s, they would go, they're reading your emails. <laughs> the government knows me. And I'm like, all my emails say queef, jizz, and anal. That's it. That's what I said to my aunt, my grandma. And I, I put click, send. If you think I'm an ISIS, come grab me. I do say praise Allah every now and then. I'm sure, that'll, I'm, sure I'm on some list at the Pentagon, but... Yeah, I don't know. Track away. I think you might have a smirk if you read my shit. I know. And like all the stuff about the government and the Patriot Act, I get it. But this is way worse. I mean, fucking Facebook makes the Patriot Act look like, uh, you know, the Riot Act. <laughs> I mean, 
It, it, all better than my act. The phone really does know us better than oh, our wives know us. Oh, man. And there was a thing. They talked about it on uh, one of these fucking podcasts. I can't remember. Tristan Harris, I think, was talking oh, about it. Oh, he's good. All the Harrises are great. Dan, Sam, Tristan. Ed. Greg. <laughs> Ed's pretty good. Oh, Neil Patrick. Oh, yeah, he's fine. He's whatever. <laughs> Uh, what, what are the Harrisons about, uh, Harrison there? Ford. Harris and Ford? Harrison Ford. That's what I thought. Uh. <laughs> um, anyways, there's probably more Harris's. Greg Harris, by the way, was a relief pitcher for the Boston Red Sox in 1991. Well, that could be made up. Um, well, it's all made up, really. I guess you're right. It's all perception. What was I going to say about Harris? Oh, he was saying... That your phone now, the phones will know, have the capability to know if you're gay before you do. Wow. He's like, absolutely that's true because they see how long you pause on one thing. Oh. You know, if you're following a bicyclist and you stop, they're like, well, he stopped on that for eight minutes. And then he flew by Carmen Electra in a pair of heels. Interesting. So the phone, and then you Google, like, what's it like to have a dick in your ass? Should I wear my mother's lipstick on Friday? Man, it's and, like you're reading my mind. So the phone is like, ah, we got a gay here. Yes. And... and and he doesn't even know he's gay. He thinks That's he's just great. wondering what lipstick feels like on his butt. You're and dead right. The, and Verizon is like, we got a live one here. Reel him in. Send him <laughs> some photos of Elton John in the 70s. <laughs> Liberace and, uh, you know, Shia LaBeouf shirtless. But, wow, that is fascinating. This is how good the phone is. I'll do the face recognition. You ever do that? Every day. I love it. And I'll make weird face try to trick it. It gets me every time, and if I wear sunglasses, it still knows it's me. See, I can make a weird face and, 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 and fuck it up, I think, though. I mean, try it. Look, it got it. It unlocked. Wait. All right. Oh, uh, wait. I think I you tricked it. it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, all right. Well, I you take it all back. Retarded. Yeah, I guess I'm not going full re. Right, but now it's not doing it just regular. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Okay, we're oh, back. Oh, Jay Nog. I got to remember to mention oh, Jay Nog. I got all kinds of reminders. Good thing for the reminder. Our pal Jay Nog uh, shot a special. Uh, it's called Something From Nothing. We're in it. We're both in it. Yeah, we are. It's really cool. It's, it'll be out on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Comcast, Spectrum, Dish, Cox, <laughs> Google Play, YouTube, Vimeo. Jesus, October 5th. Mark's in it. I'm in it. And uh, go check it out. I got a sneak preview. It fucking kicks ass. It's a great little special. You're going to love it. So go check it out. Something from nothing, Jay Nog. Great guy. Good big, guy. Big gay. Good egg. Uh, comedy guy. Lives in Queens. Done his show. Good kid. Does he live in Queens? Oh, yeah. I thought he's like in Westchester or something like that. I think he's a Queens guy. Born and raised. On the playground. I think he. I thought he moved out of there, though. Uh, well, I think he, he got a house. He does have a kid. I assume you go to Queens to get a house. I think he's got a second kid. Oh, got to pull out there, Nagy. I was talking to Mike Cannon. He moved to the country during the pandemic or with his wife's kid, mother or something. And he's like, I, I can't go back to the city. Wow. It's like it would be just horrible to do to your kid to be like, yeah. all right, get back in. You're going to get a cement backyard again. The kid's it like, what are you sense. shitting me? That's true. I think about that. I wouldn't mind having a little rug wrap, but you can't. What are we just going to throw him in that playground every day? It's tough. You don't want a city kid. I mean, uh, no offense. We love Sam Morrill, but he can't drive a car. He, he's, he's writing jokes all day. Right. He's a Jew. I mean, these city people are, are wacky. They're wacky people. They're on edge. They're, they're, they're quirky. They got a cup of coffee when they're 11. They're reading the post. <laughs> I know. I, don't you picture Sam being like uh, three years old with a Dunkin' Donuts coffee in oh, a newspaper? Oh, yeah, totally. And uh, you got to be on the subway? I, I'm, I'm afraid of the subway. A homeless guy asked me for a quarter. I take off running. I kick him in the chest and dive behind a sewer. Sure, sure. And I- I'm 49 years old. Well, I grew up in the c- in the inner city, and it ain't pretty. I'll tell you that right now. I'd go to the suburbs when I was a kid. I was like, what? Your bike's in the front law. The doors are locked. Your mom's got an orange slices. What are we doing here? It's it's just a different breed to have a, a baby, a child, the trauma, the exhaust pipes, and the, uh, the, the car sirens. The graffiti, the litter, the jerking. Forget it. I remember uh, when I was a kid, my friend lived in the Burbs, Lakeview. That's what it was called. Always had a nice name, Lakeview or Bay whatever, you know, Bay Hodge. Bay, Bayside Hodge. Bayside. Yeah, it was always nice and, and flowery and sunshiny. So we were... Uh, Hanging out at my friend's house, and his dad was like a psycho. You know, the scary dad? He was from Texas. He was terrifying. This kid, we just happened to walk outside. Dad's like, all right, let's go to the whatever, the, the store. And we're like, okay, yes, sir. 
and we see a kid go down their driveway with one of the bikes. He stole it mm. right out of their garage. Woo! Like a, they had like a carport. Kid stole it. The dad goes, "Get in!" He chased this kid down. Bumped his back tire. I mean, he was weaving in and out of traffic, chased his kid, and the kid just f- jumped off the bike and ran away, and it blew my mind. Wow. He's like Batman. He's Batman. He's like a country guy. He's like, you know, eye for an eye. I'll shoot you in the face. You steal my bike. You kill my property. <laughs> He's one of those guys. And, you know, my dad's like, you know, libtard uh, lawyer suit guy. You know, he's like, hey, Sonny, I'll sue you. Right. And this guy was, uh, he was a little more hands on. My dad, my bike I stole. My dad went and found it, which what? was fun in the car. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Wow. But it was stolen by uh, these two young girls who were older than us. What? And they said, hey, can we borrow your bike for two minutes? We just got to go down the end of the road. Took my bike and. God, I gave it to him. I gave it over. They had tits. I was like 11. They were 12 or 15 or whatever. That would hold up in court. They had developed a little bit, so they had a pair of tits, and they said, hey, or they each had a pair of tits. It wasn't one pair between them. Four. Four tits. Yeah, that's a good number. They jumped in and just took off, and then it was like two hours later, and I came home, and I'm like, Dad, some fucking hot twats took my bike, Mm. and he said, well, I'll settle the score, and we got in the car, the old 87 Chevy Celebrity. Woo! And he found him, and he said, smarten up. And Whoa. he took the bikes and threw them in the trunk. It was very exciting. Who are these? You never hear about gals doing a Grand Theft Auto. Well, it wasn't that grand, and it was a bike. But ah. uh, it was so ex- I mean, I would have given anybody anything when I was a kid. You're sure. such a bitch. I was the same way. I remember my next-door neighbors came over, Brian and Donnie, and mm. I just wanted them to like me. I started. I gave them a David Robinson like rookie card. Yeah. It's worth like $75,000 now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, tell you want to take it? And they were like, okay, what about uh, this He-Man? I was like, take that. That was the same and way. And then my parents came home. My house was empty. It was like we got evicted. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I got a couple buddies. Oh, I mean, man. it was just white walls. Everything's gone. The ALF poster, you the Hulk Hogan see undies. the outlines on the wall <laughs> yeah, there. It's terrible. Oh, man. Yeah, I was giving out blowjobs like there's no tomorrow. But it's true. But how come we were the kid who gave away? We never got. Well, because I'm not a bad person. I'm a good. I'm a sweet, sweet boy, and probably because my my parents didn't give me any value or something. I yeah, guess. yeah. I think we're I was, cut from the same cunt. Because uh, I'm with you there on the value. We're we're discount rack. <laughs> I mean, I hated myself, but also those other kids are like bullies. They had yeah. dads that fucking threw them out of the car if they ah, talked or whatever. Yep, yep. So it's a it's a balance. Yeah, I, I I had friends who were who were like us growing up. You know, a bunch of nerds and dweebs and whatever one time we were skateboarding on a church some stairs and this guy pulled up big black guy with like a raggedy ass hoopty you know like a hoopty a hoopty car you know a piece of shit i never heard hoopty you never heard hoopty no i've heard what? humpty dance no hoopty it's like you know it's like a shit box on wheels oh okay you hoopty. Know, it's, it's like er, 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 it's got the smoke coming out the, the rim falls off a jalopy there you go sloppy a hoopty jalopy so he pulls up and uh, we're filming you know that was back in the early 90s when you filmed skateboarding we had the big shoulder camera sure you know with the vhs tape and the guy goes all right all right I'll c- come here he jumps out of the, the door's open he goes he pulls his pants up he's all dirty he's like let me let me shoot you. Let me shoot you. And give me the camera, and you guys come up, and I'll get a better angle because you guys both need to be in. We're like, okay, sir, and we gave him the camera. He got in the car and left. Oh god, where are the cameras? So I don't know. They're at a pawn shop in New Orleans. <laughs> they probably exist. Don't you always think about that when you lose something, or get something stolen? That camera is existing somewhere right now. I think about that all the time. Uh, Bill Burr has that funny joke about. It. He's like, whatever happened to rollerblades? There's a pile of rollerblades in the Atlantic Ocean. This <laughs> high, and I'm like, that's so true. <laughs> Everybody had them. Now they don't have them. I think about. That with my suitcase that got stolen, if you remember, yes. some episodes ago, and I had an iPad with had like seventy five thousand photos of my wife's tits on it. Oh, I remember those. And uh, I had a Jimmy Buffett like vintage yellow T shirt that I loved more than oh, anything. Yeah, I remember that shirt. Quite a few T shirts. I, I just done and undies, and they're just they have to be somewhere. Sure. And then there was. Th- that was when the, I left it in the cab. Then there was the second suitcase and Sarah's suitcase with all our... I've lost yeah. two full suitcases in my life. Oh, man. Not that far apart either, by the way. Oh, that Couple is years. a soul crusher when you lose a full suit with laptop, your favorite shit, because you only pack your good shit. But it comes back to what we were talking about earlier. Now I'm not affected by it. Ah. I wish I had that T-shirt when I think about it, but my life is fine. It's better than it's ever been. So you lose a suitcase. It's like, you know... It hurts for a minute, though, you got to admit. But it does, it all comes out in the wash, as they say. Of course I admit, but I'm saying in permanence, that feeling goes away. Anything yeah. that has the ability to arise will fall away. Ooh-wee. 
Mm-hmm. And you can stick that in your pipe and blow me. All righty. Uh, yeah, I saw a clip of Norm. I'm like, I'm, I'm on all Norm clip all day. Last night I did it for like 20 in a row. Yeah. I watched Norm highlights. Same. You follow that? I, I did it for like two hours straight. Damn, I almost sent you one, but I was like, I'll be bothering him. Yeah, I was going to send you, but then it's like, hey, yeah, I got this one, you asshole. Right, well, I've seen them all, I think. But one was uh, one I'd never seen. It was 28 seconds, and it just it was just Norm in black and white, and it said, uh, we've all been through tough times. We're all going through something. And it, it was comforting to hear him say that and then knowing he had cancer while he was saying that. Right. And he passed. Yeah, it passed all right. Pass a stone. Uh, he's dead. But, yeah, it's just such a pleasure to, uh, to watch him. In your mind, you're like, that's so sad he's dead. But to him, he's not sad. Right. He's dead. He's doing great. So the mom outlived him. Yeah, that's sad. That is tough. One of my favorite Seinfeld jokes. Huh. They said, uh, the TV show, they said, uh, it's always a tragedy when the parents outlive the child. And then George says, yes, I hope my parents die long before I do. <laughs> oh, that's great. Feels very Larry. Isn't that weird, too? Like, uh, you know, your, our parents are going to die, inevitably. Certainly. We will, too. But our parents are going to die, and it's going to be hard. And then you think, like... This is so sad, but every single person in history went through that, unless they died first. Right. You think, it's almost like when your friend gets pregnant, you're like, you pushed a kid out. Oh, my God, out of your clam. That's insane. But we were pushed out. You were pushed out. Everyone was pushed out. It's not a miracle. No. You just had a kid. It's biology. There's like 7 billion people in my uh, neighborhood. So, yeah. You know, not that miraculous, but it's all very exciting. We're the perfect distance from the sun and rotating yeah, and all that shit. really worked out. So, And then you, you pull back on that marble. You know, you're right here, then you just pull back. And marble. The earth. Oh, I And see. it's just a vast ball rolling around in the atmosphere of, of a black space. Mm. And we're sitting here going, but I'm jealous, but I'm a thirsty. Arr. That's why it's so fun, like in Apollo 13 and in real life when they went there, you, you can cover the entire Earth with your thumb. Yeah. And I think it was just Jim Lovell was talking about, he's like, it's crazy that everything you've ever experienced, thought, felt, person, store, long line, he's like, it's all behind my thumb right now. Yeah, all of it. How insane is it to be in outer space? Yeah. There's some kid getting fucked as a... a Wolverine tearing apart another animal right now. Like a deer is getting bit in the neck. All right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. I've always loved to do that. I'm like, how many people are listening to (laughs) Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones right now? I know. There's a number. Of course. There has to be a number of that. And and then how many people are having anal sex right now? How many people are dying right now? Yeah. It's it's all really interesting. And then there's got to be like... Somebody that has, like, a clown nose on yes. with shit on their ass cheek right now. Right now. Somebody has a bad wipe, and they're, they're wearing makeup. And then we live in Manhattan, or we live in New York, so it's, you can just walk around, and there's this giant box with windows full of thousands of people, and they're doing crazy shit. It's wild. There's somebody jerking off right now while shitting and reading Mad Magazine. Mm-hmm. In New York City, I bet. Yeah, that's fun. I could do that all day. All day? Yeah, that's a good time. Tuesdays of Stories is brought to you by Breakshot Pool. Breakshot Pool is the only game on the App Store specifically designed to be played between real-life friends. It's a fun and perky turn-based game and is completely non-intrusive. No annoying ads or forced-in app purchases. We've all seen that. With Breakshot Pool, you can play pool with your friends without needing to be online at the same time. When your friend plays, you just get a notification, and it's your turn, and play whenever you feel like it. Wow, this is the future, folks. The game is free, and in-app purchases are completely optional. And if you're not a gamer or a huge pool fan, check it out. It's worth it. Yes, I've been playing it, and it's a lot of fun. It's really, this is really where we're headed, folks, and this is cool. There's, it's almost like when those guys would play chess back in the day. You know, one guy would move his piece, and then the other guy would come by two weeks later and move his, and that was good stuff. You could cook a meal, come back, you know, jack to king's ace, pawn, whatever the hell it was. So it's fun. Joe will do it, then I'll get a notification. It's fun hearing from your friends, and you're playing. And, you know, we all have weird intimacy issues, so you get to connect with your pals without having to hug. The game is free, too. Breakshot Pool is available for iOS and Android. iOS and Android can even play against each other. Woo-wee! That's rare. So you have a real interact 
interactical, interactual. You have a real interactual queef there. Ah, oh, that's fun. They put queef right in there. Tuesdays who download the game in the next week will get a variety of in-game goodies for free to make your experience even better. So go to the app. Apple or Android app stores and search for Breakshot Pool. That's Breakshot, one word, B-R-E-A-K-S-O-T, and Pool, P-O-O-L. So one more time, that's Breakshot Pool. Breakshot, one word, Pool. All right. Download the game and play already, folks. It's fun. The developers are huge twos gays, and we think the gays will definitely like this game. Get it? Aha. Uh-huh. So let's make Breakshot Pool the game of the gays. It's Tuesdays. You're getting free goodies. The whole thing is free, so give it a shot. Why not? It's free. Give it a gander, folks. We're all a bunch of cheapskates. And for those of you who can see the video, this is what the game looks like. Bip, bip, bip. Check it out and get it now. woo We'll throw that link right in there. Tuesdays with Stories is proud to introduce our brand new sponsor, Liquid IV. Oh my God, we all got a routine. You get up, you do a push-up, you rub one out, you take vitamins, you watch porn, you go to the to the library, you hit on the nerd chick, she says no, then you go back, and you know, you, you got a routine, everybody's got something. It's flu season, support your immune system with proper hydration and vitamin One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. These guys sent us a giant bag of this stuff. Man, I just put it in everything now. I put it in my water every day. I'll put two in a day, especially if I know I'm going to tie one on that night. Get on it. It actually tastes great. It feels good. You feel hydrated. You know, it's almost like a car when everything's well-oiled. Everything's just rolling, moving right, you know? It's all clicking. I love it. I'm dehydrated. I'm an alcoholic. It helps. You got to get on it. Take it every day. Why the hell not? Just feel better. Keep that body lubricated, healthier than those overpriced sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavors or preservatives, and less sugar than an apple. You can't beat it. Made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Everybody hates soy. I think soy is bad for you. And they're supporting frontline workers to stay healthy. Liquid IV has donated 11 million servings so far to hospitals, EMS, food banks, veterans, and active military. I think they sent me 9 million of those. Thank you, Liquid IV. And I've done a real IV and Liquid IV, and they feel very similar. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart or get it delivered. Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. Yeah, it's an IV. You don't forget the needle. Everybody hates the needle. That's 25% off anything you order. Get better hydration today using promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Might as well just keep some at the house. All right. Let's go drinking. We got any ads? Uh, she's got to text them later. We oh. must do it in post. Yeah. All right. Post. Good so, cereal brand. Also an office. Not really. A good cereal brand, I mean. All right, all right. Post. I mean, what do they got? What, what's, what's Post? I think you got Lucky Charm, Tricks. That's Post? I think it's, well, maybe it's General Mills. Is General Mills? What's the what's Frosted Flakes? Kellogg. Kellogg is big. <laughs> Kellogg is good. Kellogg is solid. Who Might does Apple Jacks? That's Kellogg's, too. Yeah, Kellogg's is lunch. Kellogg is good. Ironically. Post stinks. Post is like... Uh, Mini wheat, wheat thins. a lot of wheat. Yeah, wheat shit. So much wheat, too much wheat. Wheaties might be post. That might be Kellogg, actually. Kellogg's Call Wheaties. Huh? Uh, maybe I'll look that up, too. All right, might as well. <laughs> Kellogg. Yeah, Kellogg is the good one. General Mills is... They, they got some solid stuff in the Mills. Do they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mills is good. General... Mills and there's Nabisco cereal. Nabisco is more cookies, I think. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. General Mills has got some shit. Ah, uh-huh. Lucky Charms, Thank Trick, you. yep, uh, Cocoa Puffs. Oh, come on, these are classics. Wow, Lucky Charms is good. Yeah. Now, what about Post? Post cereals. I think Post might have one or two Hall of Famers. Post cereal brands. I, I, I don't think so. Alphabets. Ew. Get the fuck out of here with <laughs> alphabets. Oh, I'm dyslexic. I hate alphabets. <laughs> oh, I got alphabet soup. I need some new bits. Yeah. Favorite <laughs> breakfast cereal from Oh Pebbles, Grape Nuts. Ew. What am I? My aunt. 
Oh, this sucks. Yikes. Where's the Wikipedia? No Wikipedia here. All right. Well. Oreos. Oreos. A cereal? <laughs> no, that's a cereal. It's Oreos. Oh. Oh. All but, right. Uh, I just want a list. How come I can't get a list? They can't Grape get a nuts. list on a, on a uh, on an iPhone. It's tough. There's no. I, it makes me so angry. And there's not. I know. You just want to just look up what I want you to find. You queef. Just give it to me. Nine more rows. Post consumer brand. All oh, right. Fuck. You're off We're in all, a wormhole, right. rabbit. Oh, hole, I got it all. Here's butthole. the list. Here's the list. Oh, you got a list. Alphabets. Brand flakes, <laughs> chips ahoy, eh. golden crisp, eh. grape nuts, honeycomb, uh. pebbles, postum. Waffle Post? crisp. This is dog shit. Yeah, they they got a couple that keep them in in business, like Pebbles. Let me get Kellogg's here. Oh well, we're about to shit blood when we hear the Kellogg's, Kellogg's lineup: Corn Flakes, Frosted Flakes, Pringles, Eggos, Cheese It. Who's it in Pringles with milk? It's in Battle Creek, Michigan. Ah, brands. They got their own brands: Eggo, Gardenburger, Pringles, Sunshine Biscuit. Oh, they're killing it. Crackers, crack, crack whores. Ah, uh, mm, cereal. Fruity snack. All right, here's the cereal. Here we go. Hit me, fast. Apple Jacks. Okay. Bran Flakes. Eh. Cinnabon. Ooh. Cinnamon Mini Buns. Ooh-wee. Cocoa Krispies. Aha. Uh-huh. Corn Flakes. Corn Pops. <whistles> Crispex. Crunchy Nut. Hell yeah. Crunchyros. Never heard of it. Dildios. Dildios. <laughs> Put that in me. Fruit Fruit Loops. Okay. Frosted <laughs> Flakes. All right. Frosted mini wheats, fruit Ooh. and fiber, honey smacks. Jesus. Um, Put the dildios in my fruit loop. Yeah. Jizzos, Pop Tarts, <laughs> Raisin Bran, Raisin Wheats, uh-huh. Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. That sounds like my panties after I go to a Broncos game. <laughs> That's a gay porn. Scooby Doo, Special K, SpongeBob. Uh, three of those are drug related, by the way. Oh, yeah, good point. Special K, Smax, uh, Heroin O. Here's some discontinued cereals. Bart Simpson's No Problem O's. That one I'm not even making up. Wow. This just sounds like a guy who's bad at Spanish. Uh, what do you want, sir? No Problem O. Just trying to get by. <laughs> C-3PO's. <laughs> I mean, that's a, Louis C-K-O's. Oh, man. Um, I don't know why those are going to continue. I finished those early. Uh, um, <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we, we learned a lot there. We got uh, England. We got cereal. We got the earth. We're really pushing the audience to the test here. Let's see what kind of episode they'll they'll sit through. Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, no sleep. What? No sleep? I couldn't sleep. I just lay there. My brain just reels. I know what you mean. I, if I don't take some kind of pill, same. I got problems. I'm taking Benadryl, PM. I know. Uh, what's the other thing that's supposed to be natural? Melatonin. Melatonin. HB. What's that? A Feel, Feels used to send us stuff. I haven't gotten anything in a while. Yeah, Feels, you blew it. Fanny, hit us up. Uh, but yeah, because I, 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 it's a mental block. Yes. I'll fall asleep, then wake up. Not to mention, I got the bladder of an 89-year-old uh, woman. Oh, bad I, I, I piss every eight minutes. Yeah, not a good bladder over here. You, you, you on a road trip? I can't even imagine. It's bad. I got Jimmy legs. I'm drinking tea all day, and I, I toss and I turn. Same, and I'm hot and bothered. And uh, I get the music. You ever get a loop? A song loop? Song loop. Yeah, a song just goes <laughs> over and over, over and over. You know. I, uh, Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, oh, round I get and round. Thought loop. I get like you got uh, cancer in oh. your ass, in your ass. <laughs> um, and then I have a thing where I don't know about you, but like when I'm stressed or anxious, I'll, I'll use sex. I'll think about sex to take me out. I of do that. the same I visualize. thing. I'm like I'm, I'm just fucking my aunt. But yes, then same. that's what I do. I know I'm having Uncle. too much anxiety where all I can think about is like you know, you know nylons on a, on a woman on a school bus. Sure. And, and, and like leather shoes in my ass. So. Oh, okay. I think about past conquers. Oh, I, I don't have a lot of conquers. I see. I got a lot of divides, no conquers. A couple surrenders. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think about old uh, old haunts and uh, old old gash and really uh, <laughs> like me- like try to bring myself back there. Like, oh, remember in 88 when you went to the Halloween party and she was dressed as a jack-o'-lantern and I was the candy and good times. Yeah, I, I hear you. But yeah, it just it starts to race and I get anxiety now in the morning. This is why I wake up at like 7 a.m. Yeah. And, and people are like jealous. Like you wake up early. I'm like, I get up early because I'm having a panic attack. Right. I'm sitting there going, I got to send email. I got to blow my father. I got to call my mother and sure. tell her about the blowjob. And so well, I just get up. Yeah. I'm the same way. And then they, 
You know these people wake up and they go, oh, I got two more hours. I'll sleep. I'm like, what do you mean you got two more hours? How do you just go back to sleep? I, that, it's mind-blowing to me. And, and also, uh, this is interesting, too. I'm, I'm 75, but I, I still wake up with hard-ons. Really? Yeah, I wake up with a rock-hard car. I'm like Jim Morrison in leather pants. I get one a month, maybe. I mean, it used to be daily, and then you have to go pee in the toilet, and you'd hit the, the shower. Mm-hmm. But now, I get one a month, I'd say. And I have to be dreaming about my dad. <laughs> Or, you know, whoever, the teacher, the principal, the cop, the butcher, or the cat. The candlestick maker. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, that guy. I think it's a nursery rhyme or a Christmas The butcher, carol. the baker, and the candlestick, candlestick maker. maker. What is the, what's the origin of that? I think it's one of those, you know, up your butt and around the corner. You know, it's one of those limericks from the sea. I never... <laughs> I never got into anything. Ki- I was a kid for about six weeks. Uh-huh. I never got into any kid thing. Cartoons, fable. Really? What's an Aesop? I, Aesop... Fable. He's a guy. He had some stories. Uh, and like Little Miss Riding Hood and, and all that shit. <laughs> little, I'm like, little pigs. I always hated it. I'm like, get out of here. I, I liked, I'm serious. I liked The Godfather when I was like 10. Right, uh, right. Or, or, you know, I'm like, sports. I was all sports. <laughs> That's true. You were never a kid. I had no childhood. No Thundercats, no Transformers, no Power Rangers. I watched, I was too young for Power Rangers. I mean, I watched Thundercats. I was in it for like a minute, but. Yeah. That must have been tough as a, as a little struggling nine-year-old when you're reading Playboy. Oh, I struggled big time. I, well, I like sports. I loved uh, all the sports, but and then I got into movie. I was into like kiddish movies, Overboard, Honey, I uh, Shrunk the Kids. Yes, yes. I was into Bill and but, Ted. Yeah, stuff like that. I, you know, uh, Monty Python. I was into Young and Ferris Bueller. Yeah, yeah. Rest, but even wrestling, I was into. I was like eleven. And I was like, all right, this is a little that's, silly. That's how I felt. The guy's got. Tight, hot pants on and long hair, and he's oiled up. Well, what are we doing here? He's yeah. hitting you with a chair, a guy in a business suit. And then I got into, like, Billy Joel, and it was all like, it's 9 o'clock on a Saturday. And I had, like, this downtrodden like, yeah, drinking, I'm sad. Oh, yeah. It was, it was bad. I wish I was listening to, like, you know... Some romper Raffy. room or whatever the fuck <laughs> yeah. it is. Or, Raffy. Uh, Barney. Yeah, well, the... the, the other opposite end of that is the guy we know who has 900 action figures on his wall and he plays with them every night and then he puts on Ninja Turtles pajamas and has a bubble bath with a with a rubber ducky. Yeah, I find these guys that are into uh, wrestling still a little bit off-putting, quite frankly. <laughs> it's a little odd. I get it. And then sometimes you feel weird because you're the only one at the table who's not into it. And they're like, and Macho Man, you know, face fucked a million dollar baby or whatever. And you're like, wait, what? Who cares? The guy's wearing a green suit. They're, they're 48-year-old men with an opioid addiction. <laughs> well, and from what I understand, wrestling now, it's like Peter Jones versus Steve Murphy. Ah, it used to be Ultimate Warrior versus... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was like jokes. It was like it superheroes. Was funny, yeah, yeah, that's it true. Was the fun. Undertaker. Yeah, he was from Death Valley, which is silly. And yeah. then he was fighting like the rich guy came out, and then there was like he's this guy's from Australia, and he has snakes in his yeah, pants. Yeah, that's right. But, the Bushmen or whatever, the Bushwhack yeah, brothers. The bush guards. Yeah, yeah, Luke yeah. And Butch. That's true. Macho Man was silly. He would eat the Slim Jim. He had a beard and sunglasses on. And now you're right. They just take a job and they they crazy it up. They're like, this is the guard. And he's got a weed whacker. And a, oh, and a, I thought they don't even do that anymore. I thought it was just like oh, maybe you're Bill right. versus Mike. Well, there's there's like Steve Austin. Right. But he's he's gone. Even that was 20 years ago now. Oh, is that right? We're old. No, then I'm out. I'm out. No, Steve Austin's, uh, he retired, I think, 15 years ago. Jeez. <laughs> well, what the hell do I know? But, I will say this. Wrestling, the only thing that's sadder when you go pro, when you go pro mm. maybe prostitution. Yes. Isn't that an old bit of yours? Never worked. Yeah. Not on here either. Okay here. Not really. No, I, I thought, but I was just like, oh, I think I know that from you. Yeah, no, I tried to get it to work. The big joke at the end was, uh, well, the only thing similar is uh, at the end, you both of you get choked out by a guy in a suit. Cause yeah. I, yeah, all right. Damn. Yeah, no, it stinks. All right. But the premise is great. The premise is something. Very good. Professional. On I went professional. Oh, what do you mean? You're uh, you getting paid? Well, yeah, but I wear my father's underwear. I don't know, something. Yeah, something. It's tough. Tried to crack That's it for years. That's an old one. I remember that from, like, you know, 2005 or something. Give me five more years. I'll crack it. I got to sneeze. It's one of those bits I put on the back shelf and, uh, oh. How you? Jesus <laughs> Christ almighty. It's a sneeze burp. Hallelujah. 
you put it on the back shelf, and then you know you're in the shower one day when you're getting divorced, and you go, "I got it." I don't know if it's a back shelf. It's a back burner. Ah, not just a regular shelf. This top shelf. Sure. Top chef. What about when the when the guy you go, hey, you got any shoes? They go, let me check the back shelf. They go on the back. I don't know the back shelf. I don't maybe think that's just, regular. Maybe it's just, just the, the back. back. Yeah. Yeah, baby got back. Have you heard this new term I keep hearing? I want my baby back. I hadn't heard this ever my whole life. Heard it six months ago. Now I'm hearing it every ten minutes. Hit me. Let's table it. What? Have you heard this? Not once. It's new. You're going to hear it now. It's one of these things okay. that now that I've said it, you're going to start hearing it. I feel like I would have noticed table it. You're going to hear it. I think industry people say it. We'll table this for another time. Table? You put it on the table. But it's already on the table. <laughs> right? No, I think it's in their pocket. So they take it and they put it on the table and then they come back to the table, I guess. It seems like you'd put it in your pocket. Let me look this Let's up, pocket too. pocket it. <laughs> pocket it makes more sense to me I think it's in the pocket Aha. Uh-huh. now it's on the table And there's pocket pool But then there's also take it off the table Exactly So take it It's the opposite of take it off the table uh, You table it then To take un- it off okay. the table has to be on the table Then there's under the table But to be on the table and dreaming uh, yes. To be on the table you gotta table it I don't so know I table think it. they're working backwards I'm They took you. off the table and added table it That's gonna come and go I, That's not sticking I can uh, feel it. By the way, I'm happy to announce or say, remind you, I said that about the fidget spinners. I was like, I give this six <laughs> weeks. Fuck all you got. Remember, Luis Gomez was like obsessed oh, with fidget spinners. Oh, my God. He was doing videos about it. That and the hovercraft came and went. Oh, what's hovercraft? Remember, there's the two, the two wheels and you put your stand on it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was the hottest Christmas item. Every kid, Tom, Dick, and Anal had to have one, and uh, that, that came and went. But you know what stuck was, uh, let's unpack this. Yes, that's that around. I think table it is is the new one related. Okay, there's Here also put a pin in it was big too. Here it is, Hit idioms me. by the free dictionary to delay, postpone or suspense, suspend something for future consideration or discussion. The legislature agreed to table the motion for another day. You table a motion to postpone. Okay, it made it on the internet, but I, I don't know if that's sticking. Table that's, it is no good. Where does the expression table it come from? And, oh, yeah, here it is. Parliamentary procedure. So I think it's been around. Oh. Usually means postpone. Finally made it to the uh, common vernac. Difference between American and British usage. Blah, blah, blah. Isn't it weird? In Britain and England, we both say it's on the up and up. Mm. In Britain, it means like it's coming up. It's getting better. Yeah. But in America, it means like square. It's on the up and up. Oh. This guy's offering me 100 bucks. Is he on the up and up? Yeah. That's what it means here. Right. But in England, that means, and I found this out because Sarah says up and up, and I'm like, I think you're saying it wrong, but I didn't want to say anything to her, so I Googled it. Aha. Uh-huh. And in England, it means something else. Yeah. It's, it's on the up and up. Meaning like it's, it's going it's, places. It's on the come up. Yeah. Interesting. Like this neighborhood, it used to be shitty, but now it's on the up and up. Aha. Uh-huh. But we use a completely different way. I think theirs makes more sense. I guess so. I don't know where ours comes from, the up and up. The up and up. There's no down and down. No, there's down and dirty. That's true. Uh-huh. I'm down. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting how those, uh, those things change. There's a street over there that used to be called uh, Orchard Street, and just through time saying Orchard, Orchard, it just got changed to Orange Street. Wow. Isn't that weird? That's very weird. You know, because uh, you get some foreigner guy coming in, he goes, I'm going to Orange Street. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Maybe it was a Down syndrome, but over time it just kind of uh it's like in New Orleans we say, Where you at? Where you at? Meaning like, how you doing? But it's where oh, yet. Right. And yet is now a word. And we call we call uh like rednecks yats. That guy's a real yet. Weird. Because you say where you at. Hmm. Cultural. Yeah. Well you should table that. Yeah, we'll table it. That's on the up and up. This is fun, I think. Ah, something here. Yeah, it's weird. It's interesting. I think people I will get a lot of people going, hey, that was weird and fun and kooky. They had moments. The the, the thing in the uh, with the ocean, like you, you lose your Jimmy Buffett shirt, the suitcases, that was a moment. No, I think it's been good. All right. I'm 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 like delusional. I'm so tired. I'm like uh, woozy. Maybe take a couple PMs. Oh, I got shows. I meant tomorrow. No, ah, tonight, tonight. After the shows. After the shows, yes. Yeah, it's all stressful, you know? You ever have this? I uh, made sweet, sweet love to the lady earlier, and you're like, I'm glad I got that in, because now we're not doing it tonight. Hmm. 
That makes sense. Yeah, I think I have a different kind of situation. Uh huh. I never had. I don't understand these people that are like, "Ah, oh, my wife wants to fuck." I've initiated every single sex ever, ever. Well, I initiated, but I'm just saying. But you're like, like, now we have to worry about that tonight. I'm like, there's no thing where we're like, we got to do it. Oh well, I'm just saying it was a. I like a daily. Oh, a daily. Well, maybe yeah. not a daily, but uh, if you do it once in the day, you're you're good. Is what I'm saying. Sure, John Daly. Yeah. Yes, Daily Show. Yeah, but I'm I'm old now. If I fuck three days in a row, I'm like I need some days off. No, I get that. I can't uh, I can't be thinking of someone new every day. No, that's a lot of imagination. I mean, so you gotta meet uh, more people. But yeah, I, I like a nice three spot. Three spots. Three good. days in a row, and then you're like this. Let's take the weekend off. <laughs> But in the old days, you know, I, I'd oh. be jerking off every 10 minutes. I'd see a, a bare foot, and I'd jerk off. I'd see someone throw up in a garbage can and have to go beat off. Yeah, I didn't know you were into the Grizzlies, but I, I, what is it about a hotel room? I'll jerk off four times in a day just because it's, it's easy. I think we're lonely, and there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do, and your dick's right there. But there's that Murphy's Law, or whatever the fuck. No, that's not right. What's the other one? Uh, Pavlovian Law. Uh, that's a law? Dog, whatever it is. It's an, it's an act. act. Um, that was fun. There you go. As soon as I walk into a hotel, my dick just shoots up into Same. the sky, and I, I got to beat off into the Bible immediately. Talk about up and up. <laughs> it is right there. <laughs> it's something about the mirror, or the smell, the, the comforter, yes. the remote. I, Same. I put that remote up my ass. I, I close the blinds and really spray one on the wall. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Immediately. What do, you, just, what do you do? Towel? Oh, I go get a towel, yeah, and then every once in a while, I will either on purpose or accidentally confuse my pizza towel with my jerking off Ooh. towel, and I'll just smear a big thing of cum. I, got, I just got jizz and pepperoni right on my cheek. Man, oh, and man, the kids oh, love man. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That ain't cheese, folks. There we Snapper. go. A little popper at the little, end there. <laughs> Anal <laughs> popper. Um, All right, where are you going to be this uh, upcoming year? Oh, I don't even... I think I caught your delusion. Maybe you got COVID, and I'm oh, catching it now. Well, you're welcome. Delta. Um, Frequent flyer. I'm flying Delta tomorrow. I'm at Bananas this weekend, <laughs> uh, Friday, Saturday, in Rutherford with Matt Wayne and Ray Goots. What? When's the last time you saw Goots? Blast from the past. Yeah, I'm excited. It's got to be me, Matt Wayne, Ray Goots. Down there in uh, Rutherford. Where the hell is that, Jersey? Rutherford Behave. Yeah, I think that's where the uh, Giants play. Or they used ah, to play. Maybe that's where you're playing, in the stadium. Giant Stadium. Well, now it's MetLife. But anyways, ah, I am also... Team. November is big. November, I will be at Chicago Zanies, Portland Helium, and Providence Comedy Connection. All nice. back to back to back, plus Skank Fest. So I will hope to see you guys there. Get some tickets. And please subscribe to my YouTube page, there's a bunch of shit on there, and I'm going to put a special out there early, early next year, Ooh. shooting hopefully in December. We're trying to finalize a date, but uh, please subscribe to that, and uh, yeah, that's it. Very exciting. Good stuff. I'm uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, Rochester, Boston, New Orleans, uh, Dr. Grins in Grand Rapids, Royal Oak, Atlanta, Buckhead Theater, all kinds of stuff. There's your pooper. Check out the special on YouTube. Check out the Patreon. Get a shirt. Shelby's got new shirts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got killer. We got a. We got a plug. Killer that. new merch. I mean, best merch in there? town. Is, I don't know. Oh uh, boy. Hold, hold on. on. I'll find it. Hold Shelby will shoot us in the dick. Yeah, we forgot it last time, but he puts it in the description on iTunes. So. Uh, Give it a whirl. Let's see here. Here we go. Shelby. Easy does it. Shelby. Oh, there's Fanny. It's Shelby. Oh, wait. It's Shelby and me and Mark. Here we go. Uh -oh. Here it is. What do you oh, got? Twitter. Hold on. This is oh, there it Twitter is. Twitter link. You got it? Oh, I got nothing. Comb? I just got comb, yeah. Yeah, comb's so good. <laughs> comb. I prefer a I brush. Comb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> keep comb and carry on. You got that right. Here it is. Uh -huh. I got it. Hit me. Tuesdays with stories dot big cartel there dot it com. Is. B I G C A R T E L. Here, here. Tuesdays with stories dot big cartel dot com. Tons of new kick ass stuff. Woo Killer merch. Con like, look, look at these things. You can't even see it, but they're really cool shirts. They're super cool. We're like army guys. I look like Harrison Ford. You're Rambo. I don't even know what the fuck wow. that is. Or Great who designed colors. it. But 
It's great. Yeah, the colors are fun. Colors yeah. and whites. Uh, Separate. Check it out. But equal. Here, here. Church and state. Thanks, guys. We're uh, we're going to pass out. We're on edge. Thank you. Praise Allah. Queef it up. George is saying cut it. <laughs>